Well, today is going to be a little bit simple, but I think it's profound. I can't help but just get into this and think about my own self a lot when I first got born again. When I first got born again, it was a very unique experience. I was 24 years old. I was pretty much a pretty hard hellraiser. I mean, I was old Harley Davidson motorcycle riding, long-haired doper, and, you know, had a military experience and just out and wild, you know, just out and wild. And when I met Jesus Christ, man, he changed my life to the place. Here I am with all these construction workers. I'm an iron worker. I'm hanging still. These are pretty rough guys. And I'm out here at Duke Power at this particular time when I got born again. It's called Duke Energy now. The nuclear power plant, we were building it. And that's where I got born again. That's where I started preaching. That's where everything happened was on a nuclear, how prophetic, a nuclear power plant. And so the witnessing out there, no one was teaching. No one was preaching anything that I knew of. I heard there were other people preaching, but I never seen it. I wasn't taught anything, and I didn't even know anything. I wasn't churched. I didn't grow up in church. Even though my father was a Baptist preacher, I was 15 years old when he got born again. By the time he was getting all fired up, I, I was in the army at 17. So I missed a lot of the, quote, religious stuff. Thank you, Jesus. So I just started getting into the Christian stuff when I got born again. And witnessing was something that no one ever taught me. They just told me to do it. Just, just, you need to witness. You just need to witness. So I literally learned to witness the way that I witness all by myself. Well, I'm the Holy Spirit helping me. But I would ask him, what do I do? How do I do this? And I would pray, and I was having trouble with scriptures. You know, I wasn't as educated as most of you in those days, and I was really digging and really wanting to know some things. And so I'm going to give you some scriptures today on witnessing. And we're just going to talk about it because it's coming into the season of Easter. And as we begin to move into the season of Easter, that there's a natural spirit. I'm serious. There's a natural spiritual atmosphere for witnessing. It's just something about this season. Just prior Easter and right after Easter, even to the people that are unchurched and don't go to church, there's a spirit about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. I mean, let's face it, everything's in threes. And out of those three, everything out of a three, one of the thirds is the greater. The resurrection, death, mm, burial. What's the greatest? The resurrection. Amen. So our lives are to be resurrected in Christ Jesus. Our old lives are to die in Christ Jesus. That's what your water baptism was. That was your funeral. You literally already have had a funeral. You have died and you have been buried. Now, I don't misunderstand me. I know that your physical body is going to go one day, but you know what I'm saying. And so you have died and you have been buried. Water baptism is a symbol of what happened to you. And then when you went in the water, the water washed away your sins, like water washes away dirt. And then when you come out of the water, you're alive. It's a resurrection. You went down old, you came up new. You went down sinner, you came up saint. Hello? That sounds crazy, doesn't it? I went down a sinner and come up a saint. That's the grace of God because you can't earn being a saint. His blood has to cleanse us and forgive us and strengthen us before we get anything. We have to be cleansed by him. He's the sanctifier. Sanctification comes through you meditating and reading the word. It cleanses you with the washing of the water of the word. Well, I guess I ought to give you some scripture. I'm going to hit you with uh, Acts 1-8 to start off with. I know you're familiar with it. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. If you're Baptist, I'll word it this way. And you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now, why are you saying that, Pastor? Because when I was in the Baptist church, we had a pastor that said, never say ghost. I think it scared him. I'm not sure. But uh, <laughs> there's nothing to be afraid of uh, unless you're against it. And after the Holy Ghost has come, watch this, upon you, not in you, on you. Baptism is on you. Are you all right? So when he comes upon you, 
you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the earth, down all the way down to Leslie, South Carolina. And so we look in the scripture and it says, you shall receive power. If we were to break that down and get into it, it means the power to witness. The power to witness. And some of us think that witnessing is, is being bold and standing on a street corner and holding a Bible and, and hollering real hard stuff. Like, you drunkards, you're going to hell. You whoremongers, you're going to burn. And we've heard that. We've all seen that. That's not the gospel. It's a truth. But that's not the message of salvation. It's not the message of covenant. It's not what God is after to hook your heart to show you him. He's not out just beating people up because of their sins. He came here and got beat up himself so he can talk to you and show you and reveal to you everything about him so that you can be restored and brought right back into what you were created to be because your whole entire purpose of creation was interrupted by the demons of hell and Jesus stepped in and cleaned that plow and destroyed the works of the devil and he has put his spirit inside of you and you are a new creature in Christ Jesus you are the head and not the tail you are above only and you are never beneath and I'm saying you and you're looking at me like you can't be talking to me you don't know how terrible I am yes I am talking to you because the God I know takes terrible and turns it into terrific I'm telling you God will take the biggest mess out there and make you the biggest message you've ever heard that's just the God that he is don't you beat yourself up anymore quit beating yourself up about the past sure you blew it yes you messed up stop it you're a new man now yeah but I've been saved so long and a new man no every morning his faithfulness is fresh it is brand new when you woke up this morning everything that you went depressed or sick about when you woke up a fresh anointing waiting to greet you to wipe all that mess out and a lot of us just in your mind it's what you've let your mind lean to and think about and meditate on. That's why we need to get in the Word and get your mind renewed by it. Because when your mind's renewed by the Word, when stuff happens, the thoughts of God's Word reflect back to it instead of your own personal thoughts, which is usually condemnation and fear and all the other stuff. But you receive power after the Holy Spirit's come on you. On you. You get born again, the Holy Spirit comes in you. You know, the Baptists are going to love me saying this. They really are right. They are. They're right when they say you got it all. The problem is, seriously, they haven't understood how to walk in all that they got. And so, yes, it's all there. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not your new birth conversion. That is an experience of power. And the purpose of it is for you to have power. Power to lay hands on the sick. Power to be prophetic. Power to walk under an anointing. A power to hear the voice of God and obey it and watch God move and do exactly what he said. And you heard it come out of your mouth and it blows your own mind. Mm. And so he says, you shall be witnesses to me. And then he talks about your towns and all the earth. And he gets into it. And it's so good. Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I would read that and I would think to myself sitting on the job as a new Christian, long hair, all messed up with all these other construction workers. I just got born again. They're laughing at me. They're poking at me. If you guys have never been in some serious construction, you have no idea how hard they can get on you if you, what they call Holy Joe. When you turn Holy Joe, boy, I mean, they, they come after you. <laughs> I always remember the reason I never, I'm serious. I said this one time. I said, you know why I wouldn't want to be a Christian? And the guy said, why? I said, because if I ever backslid, I couldn't make it. These guys will kill you. Are you hearing me? Well, guess what? I became a Christian and they helped me. They didn't kill me. They made me stronger. Every time they come after me and every time something happened, God showed up and God showed out. I've been threatened. I've been Everything you can think of. Bible slapped out of my hand. They've never, ever, ever beat me. They've drawn their fists back. They've held me down. They've done everything. But something would always happen, and they would turn purple and run. I'm not kidding you. you white people can turn purple. When they see something, they don't know what it is. They turn purple. <laughs> I don't know what it was. But that old Hell's Angel, this was a group of Hell's Angels that come in from California, and they were inspectors. And I mean real Hell's Angels. And they all got after me. And they caught me on the top of the 
nuclear power deal one day and literally grabbed me, slammed me up against the iron, drew their fist back. And I remember seeing the word hate tattooed on the guy's fist, on his knuckles. And I just looked at that word hate. And I looked in his eyes. And <laughs> my feet were off the ground, literally, like a movie. And he looked and he said, I'm going to sham this right slap down your throat. And he used other words. He said, and when I do, I'd like to know what you're going to do about it. And he laughed. And I just stared at that word hate. And I said, well, sir, I said, I'm going to feel real sorry for that fist when God gets through with it. I don't know why I said that, but that's what come out of my mouth. And all of them jumped back. He turned purple. His skin started jerking on his face. I'm not kidding. And they all run. And he just let me go. And I dropped down and they all run. And I looked around. There was nobody there. I thought, wow, don't forget to say that <laughs> when you're in trouble. <laughs> but God has just gotten me out of so many messes like that. I was witnessing, and the enemy wanted to come and mess it up, and God messed up the enemy. Mm. Are you okay? So we let our light shine before men, that they can see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. And I used to look at this and think, what can I do for people to see the me shine how do I shine what what how am I shining and you know how you shine God's Word is a light when it's coming out of your mouth you can't help but shine and it's something to walk through a construction site with everybody hurting with their needs their marriages are broken their kids are messed up that their, their bodies are injured and they're working in pain there's all kinds of problems and you just it's amazing and here I am 24 years old just born again basically illiterate I only had a sixth grade education at that time and I mean boy I'm like ooh, and I'm trying to learn to read I went back to school career development center and literally went to the first grade and started all over and went back to school for 15 years I, I wanted to know God's Word I wanted to everything about it and I could not read it. I drove I drove Kathy, my late wife, I drove her nuts with a great big giant family Bible that I ordered and I was in the army for my daddy. I had the Souls family on the front of it. I thought it was beautiful. That became my Bible. Now I'm running around with one of these great big giant thick Bibles about this thick, gold trim, you know. And I can't read it. And I'm trying to get into this thing. And that's why I had to go to school. One day she just threw the Bible at me. She said, I have things to do. And we got kids to raise. Why don't you learn to read? I, well, maybe I should. <laughs> and I, I have a little bit. If you notice, I'm reading to you right now. Y'all not mad, are you? Why are y'all looking at me like that? You just found out I had a sixth grade education and you thought you were smart. All right. Well, I kept going, and if you're visiting, I kept going. I graduated. I've got a doctorate in theology, so see, I'm a big dog. You can call me Dr. Larry now. So the light shining is the word coming out of our mouth. He says, where do we do that at? Before men? He's telling you, but when you're before people, witness. And see, we all get the idea of being on the street corner and screaming and shouting. It's not that. It's being who you are and being yourself, but let God in you come out with it. It's just, it's just neat. I can just be in a place to do an early voter thing. I just go up to sign. I want to get it over with, make sure my vote's going to get in. There's an older senior citizen guy sitting there just talking and complaining about something going on in his body. And it's quiet, and the line's a little long, and I'm waiting. And he just keeps on. And so I just, I just said, hey, I used to have the same exact problem you're talking about. And I said, the Lord healed mine. you care if I pray for you? If I pray for you, I believe he'll heal you right now. And they'll look at you real funny. Well, if you want to, I said, yeah, I want to. Just prayed for him real quietly and gently. Lord, I just thank you. Now, there was a day I was a nut about that. But I said, Lord, I just thank you for this man. I just lay hands on him. And, Father, I rebuke this pain, and I curse it in Jesus' name. And just talked to him for just and thing. He said, what did you do to me? I said, I didn't do anything to you. I love it when I hear that. What did you do to me? I didn't do anything. The Lord touched you. If anything good happened to you, it was God. All we do is pray, and God does all the work. And it's not us doing the work. We're just the messenger with the message. And he who sent the message will confirm the word delivered. That's what he says in the very, very end of the book of Mark. And they all went and preached the gospel everywhere. 
and he confirmed the word with signs, wonders, and miracles as they preached. That's what God does. He will confirm what you preach if you'll preach it. Oh, well. 1 Peter 3, 5. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Boy, when you're on a job or wherever you work like that, if people see you living it, they're going to ask you about it. They're coming to you. I mean, they're going to they're gonna come to you. And you're gonna, you're, there's something just happens when you get born again. That's just something supernatural. There's, there's a love in the Word of God that doesn't see gender. It doesn't see color. I, th- I, can, I can just really tell when somebody is genuinely filled with the Spirit. They get around a, a, a person that's transgender, and they love them like whatever. You never, never discuss anything about whether, what gender. You love the person. You minister to the person. You let the Holy Spirit do the rest of it. We don't have to judge them. We don't have to convict them. We don't have to condemn them. All we have to do is love them. And when they see that God loves us and loves them like he loves, hello, it makes the biggest difference. They got to see it. And when they see it in you, you loving them, them hell's angels, you know what they wanted? They wanted a reaction from me. They wanted me to defend myself physically. They wanted me to just stand up and act like them. And I just stood fast to the word I preached. And I told him the truth. I'm going to feel real sorry for that fist when God gets through with it. I don't know what God showed them, but Helen, I'm glad they saw it. Mm, probably my teeth are more happy than I am. Acts 22:15. And by the way, always be ready to give an answer for the hope that's in you. Always. Anybody ever says, you're different. You get ought to smile and say, oh, I'm not really different. It's just the word of God that makes the difference. And it is. It's the word of God. And Acts 22, oh, the book of Acts. Wonder why it's called Acts. It's nothing but Acts, right? All of us should be the book of Acts. Get up and act every day. For thou shalt be his witness to all men of what thou hast seen and heard. Notice how you, you witness what you see. And you witness what you've heard. My church that I went to before I started pastoring here was in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It's called Restoration now. Back then it was called Maranatha Faith Center. And that's where I drove my family to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Tuesday night, and Thursday night. And hang still all week. And I'm here to tell you that Baptist preacher was awesome. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. He started preaching faith and power. And miracles started happening. And I'd sit in church and I'd see all that stuff going on. And when I'd go to work the next day, I'd do the same thing at church. That I mean, at work that the pastor did at church. And I'd get on a crane and I'd say what I heard my pastor say. And boy, a bunch of people would come to the crane for prayer. And I'd lead them in a prayer. And they'd get born again and average about 100 people a day. Not bad. It was more exciting than going to church. (laughs) I'm serious. Yeah. So anyway... I was just letting everybody know the hope that was in me, what Jesus Christ has done. And I didn't plan it. I didn't organize it. You know, they give me a 40-ton motor to hold with my crane, and it was going my crane couldn't do anything for two or three weeks. Those of you know construction, what I'm talking about, there's not I have nothing to do. Nothing. My my crane's tied down. So I just sit there. And I went and told them, I'm going nuts, man. You gotta give me something to do. And they said, what, why don't you just go read? I said, you'll let me read? Yes. I said, okay, man, did I read? And I read and read and read and read and read. And when that whistle would go off, I'd climb on the crane and I'd start preaching what I was reading. It just coming out of me everywhere. And here I was, a simple old Baptist boy, filled with the Holy Ghost, on a construction job, never been taught anything. But as I'm sensing things by the Holy Spirit, step out and do it, the power of God just moves mightily. I'd give anything if somebody would have taught me or would have shown me or would have told me. But I had to go in a church. I finally found a church that was crazy as this church is and will tell you the truth. And instead of you coming in here and getting patted on the back for being cute and sweet and dropping a dollar in the pot, now you can go home and we'll pray for you if you have any needs. I thank God you come in here understanding, hey, I've been out in combat and I'm coming in here for some refreshing. 
I need to get some new ammunition. I need my clothes washed. I've got to do a little personal hygiene. I got to get rested up because I got to go right back out that door and that world's waiting on me. And I need my sword sharp. I need my shield shining. And I need to walk with my breastplate of righteousness over my chest and my helmet of salvation and my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Hey, baby, I'm ready to go. My loins are girded up and I am ready to go. I thought you said you was burnt out and tired when you come. I am, but when I come in here, I got fired back up. I'm ready to go right back out. Don't tell me you can't do it twice. I came home from the DMZ in Korea and got in so many fights in 30 days, I just went back. Think about it. I just volunteered and went back. It was easier over there than it was here, I think. All right, Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore teach all nations see we read this and here's what we think churches with steeples with those buildings y'all go do this and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father of the son and of the holy ghost man go ye and teach all when he said nations he was even including unfortunately dinama nations go to all the nations baptize them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit Witnessing is so powerful. When you got water baptized, that was a witness to the whole world. You literally got bold enough to say, I am going to let the whole world know that I have died in Christ and I have risen with him. And when that went down in that water, Larry's souls washed away. And when I come up out of that water, a new man in Christ Jesus, you can call him Larry if you want to, but that's a new man in Christ Jesus. August the 28th, 1977. It took me from June the 11th to August the 28th to have the revelation of water baptism. I thought I didn't even need it. And boy, when I got the revelation of why I needed it, I couldn't wait to dive in. I looked like a scuba diver. They couldn't hardly pull me back up. I wanted to make sure. I'm serious, I took my water baptism serious. I have a baptistry right here under the platform. I love using it, but it's getting springtime here. I'd like to take some of y'all to the river and baptize you. You get baptized by faith, understand the revelation of it. You come out of that water, you have all kinds of experiences. You never know what'll happen to you. Hello. I've had people speak in tongues that's never spoken in tongues. They come out of that water. That's what's funny about my daddy, Baptist. We're praying. He starts praying in tongues. And I said, Daddy, I didn't know you prayed in tongues. He said, son, I'm a Baptist. We don't pray in tongues. I said, yes, you do. I just heard you. He said, oh, you, you mean what I was just saying? I said, yes, sir. He said, son, don't you read the scriptures? Those are the groanings that can't be uttered. I said, yes, sir. I didn't want to go into any detail. I, I said, I tell you what, you groan, I'll tongue. He was tonguing me, didn't know it. Tongue talking Baptist and what, didn't, didn't have a clue. I wonder how many people have been groaning in their spirit as they call it and didn't realize they were praying in the spirit in tongues it's amazing it doesn't matter what you call it it still works you know if you, you don't get the name of something it doesn't matter if you don't know the name of your car you can still crank it and drive it just got to learn how to run the car listen to what he says in isaiah in 43 10 he said you are my witness says the lord and my servant whom i've chosen that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he before me there was no God formed and neither shall there be after me you're my witness you're my servant I chose you and you can believe me and you can understand the word witness is quite interesting by the way I probably should have said this in the beginning the word witness in the, in the New Testament, uh, I'll give you the number for it. I wrote it down. It's in the Greek 3144. It uh, comes from the word Marty, or it's pronounced Martus is the correct way to pronounce this particular word witness. But it's from Marty. And it's a form of dying to self. And then people, I could never be a martyr. Have you ever witnessed? If you're witnessed, you're dying to yourself because your words are about him, not you. And your witness and your shining 
is his life through you. It's not you. And it's his words coming out of your mouth that changes people's lives, not your words. And the more revelation that we get that our witness is about displaying him. It's all about him. I'm telling you who he is. Witnessing is not telling people that they are going to hell because they smoke, dip, and chew and mess with them that do. That is not the gospel. That is a message that is preached, but that's not the gospel. The gospel is good news. And he said, go and preach this gospel, the gospel of the kingdom of God, Jesus said, preach the gospel of the kingdom. And people need to understand the gospel is about the kingdom and the kingdom that's within you. That's what draws people into the kingdom of God, the revelation of it. A king, a ruler, dumb, dominion. That's what, that's what it means. A place where one rules and has dominion, kingdom. Where is it located? Luke 17, 21 says it's inside of you. Inside of me is a kingdom. He rules and reigns. And this is where Satan was so terrified when he got the revelation in hell. My God, we have really messed up here. We have actually brought God who put us here. And we've drug him in here illegally. We cannot legally have him here because he never committed a sin. He cannot be sentenced to death legally everything that happened to him was illegal and it was wrong and that was the reason that after he was buried and he was in the pits of hell they had no power over him because he had never committed a sin and there was no sin or no guile in his mouth whatsoever and the next thing all hell knew was the power of God stood up in the middle of hell and go read your Bible. He unlocked every gate. He unlocked every prison door. He let all the prisoners of the past out and they came out. Matthew 28 says that when they rose from the dead that all the dead saints rose with him and they walked the streets. And he walked the streets for 40 days and 40 nights showing many infallible proofs that he was alive. And then on the day of Pentecost, 10 days after he had arisen and sent up, hallelujah, here come the Holy Spirit, Pentecost for 50, Jubilee being set free, and then bam, Holy Ghost comes in, and who does the first preaching? The guy that denied Christ three times, a grandma. I'm telling you, he's the one that jumped up in front of 3,000 angry Jews. Why? Because the anointing's on him. He's a witness now, buddy. And that spirit of martyr come on him, and he's ready to just let everything go but Peter. Peter's gone, man. He don't care anymore. It's Christ preaching now. And now the Christ in him is coming out, and 3,000 people got saved and baptized. Not bad for your first message, is it? Anyway, Martus. It also means to record. In other words, you have recorded everything you've seen and heard, and you're displaying it to people in life as you go through life. You're witnessing it. You're sharing. Just like I shared with the man. I used to have a pain just like that. Gosh, I mean, we could sit here with illustrations all day long of people just, just, I can't, just, marital problems the guy just sitting there just crying literally crying and I said are you okay buddy and he said oh man I just opened my lunch up and I got my wife my wife wants a divorce she wants to leave I'm just, I don't know him I just sit down beside him got a minute and just talk to him pray with him just say let's just believe God for a miracle and the next day they come running back tell me something happened when they got home and thank me thank me thank me I couldn't tell you if something was happening to straighten it out before we prayed or if it really was just that prayer but I can tell you this he was crying and he was hurting and she was leaving and we prayed and the next day she was repenting and she was sorry and he was happy <laughs> that's all I can tell you but that's what happens in life when you witness when we share with people the gospel of the Lord Jesus here let me give you some more in Proverbs 14 25 I like this one a true witness delivers souls I know you're thinking aren't you Larry Souls, this is S O U L S. I'm S O L E S. <laughs> a true witness delivereth souls, but a deceitful witness speaks lies. So we know that the opposite of speaking lies is the truth. So a witness, a martyr, we tell the truth. We always tell the truth. And that's what he says a true witness delivers souls. Matthew 5 15. Neither do men like candle and put it under a bush. They put it on our candlestick. Now listen how this is worded. 
and it gives light unto all that are in the house. That one person can light up the whole house. I bet every one of you in here know somebody or know somebody in your family that you could say is the glue or the light in your family. They just like they really shine. All of us can do that. But that's that's what we are. We shine, and that's what candles do. They put out a light, illumination. We're illuminators. We that's what we do. When we're in the presence of other people, our ministry is to illuminate them. You'll hear it on your job. They'll tell you, man, it, man, this inflation thing's killing me. I can't even afford to get gas. I'm not kidding you. I mean, this is and there's some people that it's financially, it's really that bad. You know, it's costing me money to go to work. Now, I used to go to work to make money. Now, I have to pay money just to have the job. It's like, I might, if I quit, I'm about equal. And I can't quit because I have to have benefits. I got to this, I got to that. And they're just all torn and twisted. And the Word of God is so powerful. Uh, I mean, it is. It's just like the giving and tithing thing. I, I mean, when Kathy and I came into the kingdom of God in 1977, we were born again three weeks before we went to church. And we went to church. We, we went to a big old giant Baptist church over here. And I didn't know anything about tithing. My daddy, a Baptist preacher, I still didn't know anything about tithing. And they took about five minutes and taught on tithing. And we just looked at each other. I said, I didn't know that. And we were $30,000 in debt. And nine months behind on the house payment, three months behind on the car payment, $30,000 in credit card debt. And that was in 77. And I don't know how in the world are we going to get out of debt. But the first time I heard that message, I sit down and calculated my ties. And that particular Sunday, I'd made some good money, and my, my ties was $269. Well, $269, when you got a lot of bills and you're in debt, it's hard to give that to God because I need that money but we just looked at each other and I said do you agree with that I said yes and so we rounded a figure off and we just threw it in the pot and I'm telling you about a month later after we started tithing it blew our mind we were forgiven of debt I'd been paying on a diamond ring of hers forever and just one day when I started to make the payment the guy looked at me and smiled and he said you're the most consistent person I've got paying on this stuff nobody pays like you do every week you're here I said I want to get this thing paid off he said do you believe in Santa and I don't but I just grinned at him because the way he said it I said of course <laughs> telling a story I said of course he said good because he's going to be good to you today let's just call this paid in full and he wrote paid in full on the bill and handed me the bill I said are you serious he said I don't even know why I'm doing this. He said, but I feel good about it. I like you. I said, well, thank you. I had favor. I didn't realize my tithing was working. Favor with God was working. People I'd been giving money to hadn't paid me any attention. All of a sudden, now they think I'm cute and funny and want to just pay in full. No problem. I mean, we could just keep going with the testimonies of what God did. We needed a refrigerator. We hadn't been tithing long. We had a refrigerator that held two ice cubes in the freezer. That was it. I mean, ice trays. Ice cubes, about, about this. And it, it was about come up to my chin. That's how big it was. And it weighed about a 1,000 pounds. That's how old it was. And we come home from church one day, and there was eight $100 bills and a picture of a beautiful refrigerator on a magazine stuck with a magnet on that refrigerator. How they got in the house, who did it, what did it, who angel what, I don't know. But if you don't think that me and that woman did a hissy dance in the kitchen, oh, well. Well, we did. We burned it up, baby. We was happy about that. I just, you know, things that would probably y'all would laugh at. The days, those days we've had no money whatsoever, none in the bank, waiting on a paycheck. If you don't get your paycheck, you really stuck. And a man stops at my house and says, God told me to stop and give you all my money. I thought, I don't know how much he's got, but I hope he's rich. And he poured out all his money on the counter and we counted it. And it come up to a, a hundred and 65 cents that was 165 pennies yeah a dollar and 65 cent and he started crying and he said i know you think i'm crazy i can't believe i'm doing this it's kind of embarrassing but i'm just telling you i just know that i know that i know his name was johnny woodward he said i know that i know god told me to just do it and i know this looks dumb and that's all i got well 
I took his change and took off to the grocery store and I come back with a gallon of milk and I come back with a loaf of bread and something else. Yeah, back then you could buy some stuff. But it, it got us through it got us through supper and it got us through breakfast for the next day for our paycheck. Now some of you that have plenty of money probably laughing and thinking that's silly, but I've been there. I've lived like that. I was raised in poverty. <laughs> I didn't know it. Are you okay? You know, you can be in poverty and not know it. And so it's it's just interesting. I'm rambling with you guys. Are y'all gonna forgive me, are you? Yes. Thank you. Stay on the front row. <laughs> Can I read you a couple of more? Are you all right? I know what you're thinking. Oh, he's working us up, and the next thing you know, he's gonna want us out there preaching on the street corner. Just want you to share your life with the people that's around you. God's gonna bring them to you. You're supposed to be where you're at. You ought not to be afraid of your job. There was a season that I hated going to Duke Power because I got born again and everybody was cussing and GD and an MFing and I could abbreviate all the words they say it take the whole alphabet. It it's just terrible. I just it just makes me sick, just makes me terrible. That's what I'd say. It's just terrible, it makes me sick, can't stand it. The Holy Spirit got on me one day and he let me know I got you there because I want you there. You know, you want me there? I don't want to be there because I got you. And I don't want to be around all that nasty because you're in there. And I don't want my God here. And that's, that's my attitude. And he's letting me know, listen, I've heard all that before. It means nothing. You go do the word and ignore the world. And that's what I do. All right. All right, I'll give you this one. Matthew 5, 15. I mean, Philippians 2, 15. That you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God. That's you. And the earth is waiting for a manifestation of you. That's why it's burping. It is. That's why it's earthquaking. I'm just being humor when I say burping. It's earthquaking. It's shaking. It's moving. They're trying to, they think it's your SUV. They, they, I mean, the government has no idea what it is. They, they think it's something in the natural. And it's all spiritual. The earth was created and designed for the sons of God. And the sons of God have been on the earth. And they've stepped into sin. And the son of God, Christ, God incarnated in the flesh, has come and delivered us from all sin. And all sickness. And all disease. We are a delivered people. And then we're blameless and we are harmless, the sons of God. Look at this, without rebuke, why shouldn't we witness? In the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. But look at this, among whom you. Here's your witness. Boy, that's what got me with Duke Power. When God showed me, I got you where I want you. Don't be worrying. Don't just, when you hear GD, just don't pay attention to it. You know, just don't. And man, I just got the attitude, let them have at it. I'm with God. And buddy, I got, it just, everything made my job. I got where I couldn't wait to get there. I'd be singing in the Spirit on the way, wanting to know what the Holy Spirit's going to do when I get there. And the gifts of the Spirit would move every day, every day. Somebody was getting healed, somebody getting saved, stuff happening every day. It got so exciting. It does, but man, it gets jacked up. I'm telling you, boy. Man, the gospel is awesome. And people, when they hear it, it really does affect them. They just need to hear it. Satan wants to intimidate you to make you think you look silly or weird if you use the name Jesus. There's no more powerful name in the universe than the name Jesus. Hey, why do you think he wants you to make it sound sissyish or something? Because it tore his head up. It busted him and destroyed him. Acts 10.42, I'm going to give you a couple more and I'll let you go eat. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he that was ordained of God. This is what you're telling people, not that they're wrong, not that they're a bunch of nothings. You're, te you're, you're commanded to preach to the people and testify that it's he which was ordained of God, it's talking about Jesus, to be the judge of the quick and dead. Quick means alive. Of that which is dead and alive, alive and dead. And so here we are, commanded. The word preach means to make a proclamation, to decree something. I have a commandment on my life to do it, and I was doing it before I realized I was commanded to do it. I don't know. It was just in me. Some of us are born the way we are 
for the purpose of God in the future. It's not there's something wrong with our family or something wrong. I was supposed to go through the stuff that I went through in life because of the things that I have to deal with people in life. I'm one of the few people that went to churches when they first got saved. And most of them I went in let me know I wasn't welcome. I had long hair, denim, construction worker, look rough. I always took a bath. I've, I've been clean all my life. I'm not a dirty man. I've never liked being dirty. But I've looked pretty rough. And they just wouldn't. Church of God called me out in front of 900 people and chewed me out for coming into church that way. I went to another church and then the preacher come over and tried to shaft us out of a whole bunch of money. You wouldn't believe it if I told you the story. I mean, everywhere we went, it was like reasons to never go back to church. And all I can tell you is everything that happened to me, I've been able to use it in my own church. When I see people come in that look like I used to look, I want my ushers to get them right up here on the front row. Give them a Krispy Kreme donut. Hello. And tell them Pastor Larry's coming out to preach to them. He loves them. <laughs> well, we don't give them Krispy Kreme donuts, but you got my point. You got to love people. You got to love the unlovable. Just think God loves them right now. Just think the person that you detest the most, God loves them like he does you. We just think he only loves who we like. Well, I'll move on. I know. I'm meddling with you now. <laughs> Get out of my business. Okay, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> All right, Romans, I'm going to hit you with two of them. Romans 12, 1 and Matthew 5, 13. I'll turn you loose. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you would present your body as a living sacrifice. Boy, I could stop and preach right there. Then he says, holy. That means separated from the world. Acceptable to God. Holy is always acceptable to him. And he says, that is your reasonable service. It's just reasonable for you to present your body as a living sacrifice. What was that? Well, I'd rather stay here and watch Perry Mason today. But you know what? I need to go witness. Where, where are you going to witness? Well, my little boy got a baseball game tonight. And I know them folks are going to sit around and be shouting and hollering. And I'm going to have some people I can witness to. And you can learn to witness lovingly to where people actually will go get their friends and bring them over to where you are to here. I don't mean leave you, that more will come. Have you ever noticed that everywhere Jesus went, it just drew more people? And have you ever noticed that every message he preached, none of it was negative towards people? None? He never, when he, when he talked about sin, he didn't call a person out. He would just call the whole group out. He would, he just, he would nail a whole group. He told the Sadducees and Pharisees exactly who they were. He said, you're a bunch of vipers. You're a bunch of snakes. I, I mean, it wasn't like you finding somebody that's just got an addiction, you know, oh, you old drug addicts, all you are. This is a whole different scenario. Hello. So God is not judging people like people judge people he's already judged us all by his blood if you've already been born again and you've been you've received Christ your judgment has already been given and I can tell you what the verdict was not guilty and you got to quit saying you're guilty when Jesus said you're not it's better to agree with him because he's not going to agree with you I can tell you that right now here's your last one and I love it. It says, you are, maybe we ought to change the name of our church. We've had it for 42 years, The Shield. Maybe we ought to change it Salt Shaker. <laughs> you are the salt shakers of the earth. And if the salt has lost its flavor, I've been trying to tell everybody that makes grits this. If the salt has lost its savior or flavor, wherewith shall it be salted? How many restaurants have I wanted to go in and holler, well, how are you going to do? It is thenceforth good for nothing. So that's what I've been trying to tell them. Your grips are no good for nothing. To be scripturally about it. But they are to be cast out. <laughs> Helen, you writing this down? And to be trodden under the foot of men. You are the salt of the earth. Isn't it wonderful to stop and think? That out of all the things he could have called you, he called you salt. And nothing can live without salt. You got to have it. Your body 
is one third flesh and two thirds water and it's salty water. It's all salt. Salty, salty, salty. You're the salt of the earth. The earth is one, one third dirt, two thirds water. It's amazing you're made in the, out of that dust of the earth in the same measurements. And the earth is a living organism. It's alive. And in the universe, when you look back on it, it's the only thing it, so far that man can find that has the most beautiful color of blue in the earth. Blues for life and mercy. And there's that big, beautiful blue ball, and we're sitting on it. And if we were sitting out in space looking at it, can you imagine how peaceful it would appear to be? And the closer you get to the earth, you begin to see the destruction and the agony and the hurt. We're having a good time this morning. There's people in Ukraine and other nations too. I mean, they're crying and running and screaming. And we, we're not even in the thoughts. We're not even there. We're, we're thinking about March Madness and uh, where we're going to eat and next and Easter's coming. And Gosh, those guys, I just wish I could go home. We're so blessed. You know, we're blessed. We're the salt of the earth. Uh, those of you, by the way, me saying that, that have been given a little money to send to Dennis, no, thank y'all so much. There's so many organizations that are good, and there's so much happening out there. But it's neat knowing that we're helping a couple that just got married, and they're over there helping as many people as they can get back and forth to the borders and trying to provide some food and mattresses. And they're really working their britches off. You know, when they were here a few months ago, and they were talking about going there, I know they never, ever imagined that they were going, that young man and that young woman, going straight into a war. And buddy, he's smiling, he's not afraid, and he's ready for more. I'm telling you, that little Dennis fella, he is amazing. So you guys keep him in your prayers, and we're going to witness to that country too with our prayers and our intercessions. Can I get an amen? Well, I sat down through the whole message. Now you may stand. Yay! I have a great desire to see all of you just be a witness for Christ with your personality, the way that you are. That's the way God does things. And He loves you so much. And I know some of you in here got so many needs in your life, things happening. To think about witnessing to somebody right now is probably like that. Do you have any idea what I need in my life? What I, I'm in this pressure. I am telling you. What gets you out of everything that you're in is giving. And people think when you say giving, they think money. Well, it's true. Money does help because you work and sweat for it with your blood. So money is important. But your time and your body is equally important. What do you think makes money? Time and your body. And so here we are sowing. And when we sow, then we reap. And I have learned that helping other people that are hurting, where I'm hurting, somehow God supernaturally gets things done around me and I get my big mending and healing, helping other people. When my tithing, my giving, I'm not receiving an offering, so don't be afraid. My tithing and my giving, I know that I know that I know. That is what's gonna keep me going in the future. That's why I keep getting blessed. That's why crazy things happen to me. That's why people give me stuff that I would have never imagined. I mean, I, I just remember when uh, Mr. Wilson died and, and did his funeral. His family they just bought that brand new El Dorado Cadillac. It was pretty and red. And they just walked right up here with the keys, gold keys one day. And said, the Lord said, give you the keys to the, his car. He, he, he really liked you and he would want you to have his car. And I said, well, thank you. And give me a call. And they're walking up and then turn around and come back and said, you know what? He had a bus. He's got a. 15 passenger van that he uses for bingo and he'd probably rather the church have that too I said bingo <laughs> so he blessed us with a big old church van blessed me with a new Cadillac just about but it's favor it's the favor of God I didn't ask for that I didn't oh God I want a Cadillac he, he just threw it on me and I was just nutty enough to accept it and I learned my lesson because the first Cadillac that was given to us Kathy grabbed the keys when that red Eldorado come up, I'd already learned my lesson. I grabbed them real quick. <laughs> God's good, isn't he? Well, Heavenly Father, I just lift up these people that you love so much and you grace. And your word says that you put shepherds over them to feed the flock. 
And you said, Woe unto the shepherd that feed not my flock, or even abuse the flock. And Father God, I just thank you that your word has free course in the sheep. I thank you, Father God, that what they hear is truth right out of heaven, out of your word and out of your scriptures. Father, I thank you for a people that not only witness. I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit to rest upon them for signs and wonders and miracles as they lay their hands on their family and their friends and the unknown, the people that are hurting and hungry and in bad situations. I thank you for the anointing that breaks and destroys every yoke of bondage and I thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost that comes on each and every person that believes in you and calls on your name I thank you you're going to be right there Father God when they lay their hands on them when they pray for them when they speak to them the anointing will touch their hearts and will heal men and women from everywhere oh we thank you for it Father grace them I release an anointing upon them Father God that every person in here has the same anointing the same anointing as the shepherds have. They have the anointing to go out and do the word. We love you and we praise your holy name. We thank you for your goodness and we pray for peace for Ukraine and especially for America to stay strong, hold strong to its constitution. And I thank you for men and women in government that love you and will honor you and are more than willing to change the rules and laws of this nation to the rules and laws of God's kingdom. We love you, sir, and we thank you for your goodness, and we call America strong in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Well, it's not going to be long. Things are going to be turning back around and getting better again. I'm not kidding you. I'm telling you. Don't you let this thing get you all beat up. you the head and not the tail. We're going through a roughy time, that's all, and it's just going to get better. So you can just go ahead and tell somebody things are going great, but they're going to get better. I love you. God bless you. Go do the word. Ha-ha. <laughs>